All right, so I had to cut out a little bit of the last video um, and start again. Um, so the second possible objection that she discusses is even if we could list universal spheres of human experience uh, at all, which might be a question, the experiences in each sphere are culturally constructed, um, meaning that you know we might all need to face death, but we don't all face death in the same ways. Whatever sorts of experiences we have in relationship to death are going to differ according to different cultures and different backgrounds and different historical situations. Um, so death is, is one of those possibilities. So is uh, sex. And she talks about Michel Foucault's arguments about sex in, and sexuality in ancient Greece versus... Um, well, 20th century France, which is the time that he was writing. And he argues specifically that in the writings about sex that we have from ancient Athens, which are all about men, pretty much, and men's sexuality, that the experience of sex was, was very different than what people experience it, um, you know, in 20, 20th century France to be. So specifically, the ancient uh, Athenians were not terribly concerned about the gender of their partners, were not worried about whether they were having sex with men or women so much as they were worried about the social status of their partners and what actual sorts of sexual actions they were doing um, and did those fit the social status of who they are and who their partners are. And since they weren't terribly concerned about whether they were having sex with a man or a woman, he claims, um, they also didn't have this this deeper notion of of a kind of um, a stable sense of sexuality that one prefers males over females or one prefers females over males and that this was a kind of deep sense of one's identity as having a sexuality as being homosexual or heterosexual or bisexual or any number of other um, possible categories they just didn't really have that so even our 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 very basic sexual desires and what we want um, in a sexual partner or in sexual experiences can be very much culturally constructed, even though the idea of, of you know, do you prefer men or women um, as a kind of deeper sense of your identity can be culturally constructed. So the, the objection here being that um, can we say that there could be objective virtues um, in relationship to a list of universal spheres of human experience when our experiences are so very different, uh, even in, you know, things like our relationship to death, our relationship to food, what kinds of foods we like, what kinds of foods we think are, are legitimate to eat and, and that sort of thing. And she agrees with this idea that our experiences are um, culturally constructed within these spheres of experience. But nevertheless, she says on 270 and 271, we can still criticize some views of the virtues after reflection and debate on the various kinds of experiences that people have. We can, we can think about um, and study and discuss the various ways that people have experiences in these areas. And then we can think about which ones are, um, or, or, sorry, which sorts of virtues and which sorts of ways of acting are um, more conducive to flourishing, which is the, the next idea here. We could, we could criticize some views of the virtues on the basis of what she says, the totality of our wishes for a flourishing life, as different as they may be. We can look at all these various conceptions of what it means to live as a human being and what kinds of experiences that involves. And we can think about um, whether some of these are more conducive to flourishing than others. So for example, on page 271, um, in uh, the second paragraph on the left, uh, let's see, the relativist has so far shown no reasons why we could not, at the end of the day, say that certain ways of conceptualizing death, for example, are more in keeping with the totality of our evidence and with the totality of our wishes for flourishing life than others, that certain ways of experiencing appetitive desire are for similar reasons more promising than others. 
so that we could still, we, even though we have these different experiences, she agrees that definitely happens. It doesn't necessarily mean that we we can't possibly criticize these, that there's no way to say that some of them are more likely to lead to flourishing than others. We have to be very careful and we have to be as, as um, accommodating or as thoughtful as possible in thinking about these various kinds of experiences and what they could lead to. Um, but she argues that we could still nevertheless potentially rule out some of them as being objectively not likely to lead to flourishing. Um, the, the third possible objection, I'm just gonna look at questions that arise from it um, rather than looking at it in detail. It's fairly straightforward in the text, I think, but some questions that arise from the third possible objection um, are all the spheres of human life given by Aristotle or any other virtue theorist required for human life? Because the third objection says, you know, we we can look at Aristotle's list of spheres of human life and, and say that some of these are not really necessary for human life, like uh, whatever has to do with private property. Do we have to have private property to be a human being? Um, is that required for a human life? And if not, then do we need those virtues that are related to private property, like generosity um, in relationship to wealth? And which which spheres of human life are, are, as she puts it, sufficiently central that that removal would make us into different beings entirely? And I think what she's she's tried to do with her list of the virtues is to, or excuse me, with the spheres of, of human experience is to, to point to things that she thinks everyone does have to make some kind of choices in relationship to and that really are central to human life. And if we didn't have these things, uh, if we didn't have experiences in connection to these things that, as I quoted earlier, she says, somehow we're not living a human life. Um, so if we don't have experiences in relationship to humor, I suppose, or, or death, if we were not uh, mortal beings, we wouldn't be living a human life. Or if we didn't have experiences in connection to um, uh, the physical limitations of our bodies, then that would not be um, uh, living a, a human life. So those are the kinds of questions that, that we have to think about in relationship to the third objection, which is, are all the things on... Uh, Aristotle's list connected to spheres of human experience that are required to be a human and and you know specifically do we need anything requiring private property and she says um, perhaps no that that one can potentially be left off so the last thing I want to 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 think about is um, and to do as a kind of you know attendance quote unquote for this um, day that I couldn't be there uh, I've, I've created a wiki page for the November 20th. Um, it is under um, class discussions, notes from class discussions. So not on your group pages, but under notes from class discussions on the wiki. I've created a page for November 20th and I've created sections for each one of these questions and I would just like you to write something about one of these questions or respond to what somebody else has said excuse me, already if you get there later. So one of the questions could be, do you think her list of human areas of experience from an earlier slide is a good one? Or would you add or subtract some things, which I did already ask on that slide, but now you get a chance to actually say something. Um, can we come up with an objective set of areas of human experience at all? Does this this you know first step of her objective virtue ethics even make sense? Um, does that? Can we say there is a set of, of things that every human has to make choices in relationship to um, that's objective? Um, I, I think it makes some sense, but I can, I, I'm curious to see if anybody thinks that it might not be possible. And then, or, you know, you don't have to do all of these, just do one of them. Thinking of the virtue or vice that you came up with for class on Tuesday, or any of those posted on the wiki for Tuesday's class, which is not actually there yet. We should be there soon. So I will go through the things that people um, wrote on their um, uh, things that they handed in about a possible virtue or vice that is not on the list that I showed in class. For any of those, can you link 
one of them to one of her areas of human experience. So can we say that, you know, any of these virtues or vices that you came up with, can they connect to, um, you know, mortality or uh, affiliation or humor or something like that? Or might we have to add something because perhaps something is missing from her list? So um, this I would just like you to do before class on Tuesday. Um, so yeah, I will, I was going to say maybe a little bit earlier than that so that I can actually look at them before class on Tuesday. Um, but I will at least be able to look at some of them before class on Tuesday. So I think at the latest, do it by class time on Tuesday, the 20, oh my goodness, uh, 5th, I believe it is, of November. Um, and uh, so that gives you some time after your, your essay is due to actually do this. All right, that's it. I will see you when I get back on Tuesday the 25th.